Welcome back to Bionic Life. My name is Kevin and today we are going to extend the driveway from our house driveway over to a shed driveway. This driveway is going to be about 12 feet wide, maybe half the width of our turnaround at the house side and we're going to extend it. It's about 80 feet across. We're going to strip off the top soil and I'm going to try using the rototiller on the Kubota. I talked to a few people who do some excavation, oh, you're going to use your little backhoe, and I was going to use the little backhoe, but got thinking about it, I can tear up a lot more soil using a rototiller, get it broken down into a fine, mealy consistency, scoop it with a bucket, and take it over, use it for motorcycle jumps for now until we need it for another project. It'll always be on the property if needed. First, we're going to start by laying out the width. We're gonna paint some lines on the ground so that at least I know where to keep the tiller. We've already had the site marked for underground utilities. There were just two, cable and electric. Electric is 24 inches under, and in some places 28 inches. The cable is an issue. One end, I think by the flag, I don't know if it's in frame, but there's a flag to camera right, my left, that it's, the guy said it's probably around eight inches below the surface, uh, down to a foot or so on the other side. So we'll see. We're gonna be real careful when we're working around that. They know that it's a possibility that I hit it. I called the guy. He said he would be available to repair it if need be. So we'll just be, use caution around that side. Then we're gonna lay some fabric. I already have about 12 ton of number four limestone on site. We'll grab a few scoops of that. As we roll the fabric out, we'll drizzle a little bit of gravel on top to keep it from blowing away. And then I do have a, hopefully, have a quad axle load of, uh, of stone to finish it off so I'm not continually hauling five ton at a time with my truck because it's pretty time consuming. It doesn't save me a whole lot of money by hauling it myself. Let's get started. So a slight change in plans. I was gonna run a string but I think I can stay straight enough using this technique. I can stay pretty straight with a tractor and, and the tiller behind me, I think. It'd be straight enough for what we're doing. I cannot dig a straight line with the back without a mark of some sort. So what we'll do is we'll strike off with the tiller. We'll measure over 12 feet, mark that with paint. And that's how we'll determine the width of the extension of the driveway. That's the plan, we'll see if it works. It's pretty straight. We're going to measure from this side, this side of, the, I can't really see the screen that I'm pointing at, so I'm just going to point this way. We're going to measure 12 feet from this side into the grass and make another pass. We'll scoop the loose dirt off and continue doing that until we're comfortable with the amount of sod we have torn off. Okay, our time is a little bit limited right now. We have to actually widen this out about a foot and a half, uh, just because of the way the dirt was spilling out, it appeared like the ground was tilled and it wasn't. We're hitting solid, like a curb over there. The dirt actually spilled out about six, eight inches. 
and it did it on both sides which made it look like it was a going to be 12 feet but uh, I left the mark which I marked it right at 12 foot I should have marked it 12 and a half foot and that would have probably worked out better a little better but I'm gonna have to strip another foot or so off the, of sod off this to make it to make it uh, 12 foot so I don't know how much of that we'll get done tonight we're gonna try to video some of it but uh, we'll probably be back here tomorrow mm -hmm. wraps it up for today it's getting a little dark it's not so much that i can't see yet because i'm still going to do a little bit more need to finish hauling the dirt out and then i'm probably going to have to put the little hoe i was hoping i wouldn't have to use it at all to tie in the new driveway to the existing driveway here on off the turnaround and then over on the other end we're gonna fan it out so we can make you know make nice turns that's gonna wrap it up for today. I almost forgot to record this. The guy that's hauling my stone finally got a hold of me last night, said, oh, well, I'll get you a load today if I can. Well, he texted this morning, said, hey, I'm bringing it this morning. And I wasn't 100% ready. I had to do a little bit of brush hogging with the John Deere, take the brush hog off, mount up the backhoe, and I still have to dig the interface of the existing driveway. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig along the edge get into some hard stone and then bail it into the bucket of the soda roll our fabric out there might be a spot or two i'm gonna have to hit with a with the backhoe just to um bring it down a little bit i'm not quite happy with the depth the rototiller works for getting most of the topsoil off but there's a few spots that it just didn't cut it no pun intended so we're gonna dig put it into the bucket bail it over to our pile let's get started
All right, my cameraman is pulling double duty as a loader guy today. That's my son. So we went ahead and took out a little bit of a high spot right here and extended over to there. We still have another little bit of a high spot right down where that dirt pile is to the right. It'd be right here, this guy here. Then we're gonna dig out the, the approach. Uh, we're gonna take a break though, it's pretty warm out here today. Plus if my batteries need charged on my camera. All right, we got our batteries somewhat charged. I brought a jump pack out because I think our DJIs are still gonna have to be charged. But we're gonna take out a little bit of this right here. It's a little bit high right there. Maybe a little high right up in here. Then we have to put our, my, I wanna put approaches. So I wanna put approaches in that, you know, on each side. And let's see if I can get this right over here. So what we're gonna do, I got an idea. I've never done it before. Uh, I'm gonna give it a whirl. Let you watch and see what you think. Here's my idea, we'll see if it works. So my camera guy is gonna bring a shovel, some string, paint, and a tape measure. I'm gonna see if this will work. I don't know, it's just a thought I had. And right about there. Okay, um, let's see, go 20 feet. Okay, stop, that's good enough. Okay, now, just for giggles, let's see if this idea is gonna work before we even cut string. My thought is, come out here 10 feet. Well, that ain't gonna work. Come out here, say at, 50, say at 16 feet. Oh, that's what we'll have to do. 16 feet, and then go 16 feet off the drive. You may have to pick up the shovel and go straight north. New plan. Geometry was never my strong suit. Hold on, let's see where we're at. Yeah, go that way two feet behind you. Back up exactly two feet that way. Stop. That's where you want it. Nail it. All right, let's see what this looks like. We're gonna try a piece of string. We're gonna throw a mark on the ground and see what happens. Not the best knot tire in the world, so. We'll do this, we're gonna make a loop on this end so that we can slide it over the shovel handle. Well, this should be pre-measured if we come 90 degrees, it should be 16 feet. Should be. I ain't saying it's gonna be. Yeah, ish. We're looking for an ish here, we're not looking. This doesn't have to be perfect. So the, the thought is, I don't know if you can see that, just tied a loop in the end of the string, looped on the other end. It's 16 feet roughly. So well, I'm standing up wind. Wow. This will give us a rough, rough approach. All we need to do is take this shovel, measure in 16 feet from the edge of the existing secondary driveway, and we'll repeat the process. We'll be back once we get that done. All right, we'll see how good this camera picks this up, but here's the one side of the approach. On the left side of the screen. And off in the distance, you can see the right side approach. I gotta figure out how to cut that pretty decent without using a shovel. I wanna use as little manual labor as possible. V 
These controls are so touchy. Try not to hit my curl cylinder on the tractor. I think the dipper and the boom will rob enough fluid or enough flow that it makes it more manageable to swing. If I'm extending and there we go. It only took me a few minutes to figure that out. I'll be done with this project and I'll forget about that idea before the next time I use it. been out for about another hour and a half or so have another thing I need to do this afternoon we gone for a little bit when we get back our track cameras will be charged up once again and we'll finish the other radius there the approach to the west side of the driveway we'll be right back just getting back been gone for a few hours early evening hopefully we'll have an hour and a half or so to finish digging out those high spots there's one two I can see finish this approach I had to run my son to work, so while he was getting ready, I went ahead and did a little bit more digging. And instead of bailing into the bucket of the tractor, which, you know, that probably wasn't the most efficient, I'm just bailing it over to the side. I'll come in and scoop the rest of it up with just, you know, just scoop it up with the bucket. That should make that part go a little quick, bit quicker. And I'm also going to hit these high spots and get those lo loaded out of here. Then we'll be ready for fabric. It's looking pretty good. There's a low spot here and there. I dug a little too deep, but eh, what are you going to do? So when I say I'm going to dig out, it means I'm going to crowd all the material into the point where the radius of the approach is tangent to the existing secondary drive. I may get a little bit of gravel. I'm not worried, too worried about that. I'm not going to take a ton, but I might take a little. So I'm pushing all this dirt out of the way. I'll just push this back into the excavation site. I hope the mic is coming through okay. It's hard to tell. I know it's getting, I know it's feeding to the camera. I just don't know if it's coming through clear enough. So we'll just push this stuff, but I am going to attempt to have fabric down and most of the gravel in place by the end of the evening. But cameras, there's only, these action cams do not like low light conditions. So may end up having to I may end up having to uh, just talk about it tomorrow again this swing holy mackerel this swing is something else just kind of push that dirt back away from this corner almost done digging here
probably should have throttled the tractor up just a smidge more. Try to trace that line the best I can. It ain't gonna be perfect, but it'll be good. What do they say, good enough for who it's for? I still have to go tra uh, scratch a high spot straight off the end of my bucket and about 20 feet up. This driveway is about 80 feet this extension is about 80 feet, and it's 12 feet wide, roughly. I, I hope it's I hope it's close to 12 feet, right? I'm gonna push myself forward here a little. I don't know if I could hear it in the other video, but these three-point backhoes, you can get yourself hurt or get yourself into trouble with breaking frames and breaking castings if you're not a little bit diligent and pushing and pulling and uh, I try to be kind of careful the best I can. I would not want to break the top link connector on the tractor on the John Deere. I know I know that the Kubota has actually had issues with their top link where it meets the rear end housing cracking. It's kind of why I don't know as if I'd even put this on there. And I'm, not saying John Deere's are impervious or any much better. I just I haven't heard and hadn't heard when I bought this little three-point hoe of there being problems on the 870 series or even the 50 series or any of the early seri earlier series.
It is getting pretty dark. We're gonna keep recording. We threw up a work light. I am not sure how well it's gonna work. We'll shine headlights in from one end. We're gonna roll out this driveway fabric and at least sprinkle a little bit of gravel on top so it doesn't blow away. But uh, we'll probably finish putting the four inch, ah, four inch, number four stone on uh, in daylight. We'll see how far we get tonight. Well, let's keep going. Sometimes you just have to admit you can't do everything yourself. On a flat surface, this would have been a much easier task. A little grass fire there. Yeah, so this method, it does curl up a little bit, but it does seem to work pretty dang well. Voila. Wow. We folded this end in. We're gonna lay it down and then the far edge is overlapping about a foot. So I'm, this is a 12 and a half foot roll. We must be about 11 and a half foot. It's pretty straight down this edge. We're gonna fold that down in and we'll start sprinkling a little rock on it. I'm gonna come in from the yard side to sprinkle rock because I don't want to drive on this. I hear that it, it can fold it, crease it, and that type of thing. Once we have a little bit of weight on it, I'll drive down the middle and sprinkle more on, but I'm, I want to get an inch or two on it, at least one rock deep, and we'll go from there.
I'm not sure how well the video is going to show last night. We worked into the dark, probably around 10.30 or so. Got the fabric down, uh, spread some gravel on top. I have a load of 411, uh, which I think I mentioned earlier is inch, three quarter inch down to fines. It's going to get dumped on a pad up in the secondary driveway, the farm driveway. And uh, it's going to sit there, and we'll shuttle it back and forth. I'll go get the Massey Ferguson, uh, the MF-20, bring that over, and use the Kubota. They both have bigger buckets than that little John Deere, and they curl in a little bit more, so you're able to carry it without spillage. So the next thing we'll see is the truck dumping a load of gravel. All right, we're gonna measure this out at 12 feet. This Fat Max Stanley's is not Fat Maxing that well. I thought these Fat Max were supposed to reach out further without buckling. This thing makes it about three feet before it cuts off. So I'm gonna push the roll in a little. And that's about 12 feet right there. So, and the spring, there we go. I'm just going to use the roll as a guide and we're going to melt this fabric. Use this and make our flame cut. The only really uh, interesting thing is, I don't know, there's a bunch of dead grass in this secondary driveway, and the uh, grass is catching fire because it's been so dry. So, had a few, we had a few little fires, little grass fires right here in the driveway. And now, I am going to split this in half, and I'm eyeballing that. There's a seam right here. I'm going to get a rough idea. This does not have to be exact for our purpose. I think this is 12 foot, 6 inches wide. So if I go 75 inches, looks like if I stand off, ah, this thing. I don't know if I'm all that impressed with Stanley Fat Max tape measures. So I'm going to, there's a ripple, there's a main seam here, a ripple and a ripple. I'm going to shoot right here between the uh, middle. That should be close enough for what we're doing. We're going to have to watch uh, once we get into this dead grass. We may have to pull these back and stomp on the flames real quick. That actually worked pretty decent. The green grass actually has elevated that fabric enough 
that I wasn't getting into the dead stuff and it didn't even catch on fire. I'm gonna get this stuff laid in there. So I'm not liking what I'm seeing. This edge here is almost above grade. I'm gonna melt that sucker right on down so it stays well below the, the surface and it kind of starts encroaching up here. We probably just had everything shifted this way a little bit. No big deal. We'll take care of it right now. There is some overlap here. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is lop this corner off, tuck it up in the triangle uh, that you can see to a little further there by the white line. We're gonna trim this, tuck this up there. The other side, we'll see what we have to do. I may have, uh, that side is actually folded over. So we may be good on that side too. Rookie mistake, right? Measure once, cut twice. Got a little fire down there. I'm gonna ask my assistant to come over here and throw some dirt on that. Just a chunk of dirt there. Just toss it on there. There we go. Good enough. get my assistant to straighten this out. He's gonna flop this over on top. We're gonna overlap that there. Just, uh, put this on, yeah, put the smaller piece on top of the, put the big piece on top of the small piece, maybe. Tuck, pull it all the way over here to this corner. There, lay that like that, yep. Then flop that over. And do the same up here, make sure this tucks in. Sometimes you have to make, you can't do it all yourself. So we're gonna get this all tucked under. Note to self, have a shovel. If you're a one-legged guy, putting in driveway fabric, it make your life a lot easier. I guess sometimes you do need a little uh, ambulatory assistance. All right, so we got away with a six and a half foot piece by 12 to finish out our corners here. Tractor time. at this by any stretch but your rear wheels set the grade of the bucket so if your right wheel is low your right side of your bucket is going to be low same with the left left side low left side of your bucket is going to be low so it's best if you're trying to get something somewhat flat 
Start off with your rear wheels on flat territory, flat ground when you can, and kind of move forward as you make additional flat ground. It doesn't work anyway. This a tractor back dragging doesn't work anywhere good as good as a dozer or even a skid loader, but you can but you can get acceptable results if you kind of play the game a little bit. So what we have, you can sort of see it. I don't know, maybe up into right here is sort of flat. I'm kind of going to work off that and try to get the rest somewhat flat. The nice thing about the evening is you can sort of see the shadows a little better. I'm going to get as flat as I can, then I'm going to bring some 411, which is like three quarter to dust. And we'll start locking this stuff in. And that's a little easier to work with. This stuff moves around quite a bit on this geotextile driveway mat. that turn this stuff moves around I bet that's about a two inch rut probably an inch and a half two inch rut probably moved an inch of material out leaving a two an inch void making it about a two inch deep rut from the crest of the top of the ridge there it moves around a lot we're gonna fix that right now we're gonna grab go grab some 411 
All right, there you have it. We finished the driveway. Minimal child labor was used in this project and we only needed three marriage counseling sessions, but we got it done. If you like the content of this video, please like and subscribe. If you know of somebody who might enjoy this content, please share. Thanks for watching.